you Google pictures of Ferris wheels, you'll see a lot of cool different designs. However, the one thing that's consistent among Ferris wheel designs is the impact that gravity has on it. So as you know, gravity is always pulling you down. So imagine that you are a multi-ton steel wheel and you have to stand upright all day and you're moving at a constant velocity. The challenge of gravity is something that engineers have to grapple with when they're creating their designs. So how do engineers design wheels to help distribute the pull of gravity? Many Ferris wheels take their inspiration from spider webs. Ferris wheels use a cobweb structure that is actually two in one. The two wheels, one and two, equal in size, are attached at the outer rim by horizontal beams. The center of the wheel, called the hub, is connected by an array of spokes around to a circular beam midway between the rim, called a crown, and crowns act as sort of a second hub that connect to the outer rim and helps continue rotation around the axle. Bicycle wheels work very similarly to, fin uh, to Ferris wheels in the fact that the lower half of the wheel supports the upper half of the wheel through rotation. Of course, the wheels on your bike are probably made of light aluminum and are really easy to maneuver compared to Ferris wheels which are made usually of iron or steel. Iron and steel have high tensile strength, which means that they handle well under immense pressure by gravity. gravity. It also means that it takes a little bit more than just pedal power to get these wheels to move. Early Ferris wheels were powered by steam boilers. Today, most Ferris wheels are electric. For instance, the wheel at Icon Park in Orlando is run on about 14 electric motors that produce about an output of 123 horsepower. That's only about the same as an average automobile, making it a pretty efficient operation to get this Ferris wheel going. In addition to moving the wheel, motors are responsible for maintaining the constant speed of rotation. On the ascent, motors work to lift the passengers against the pull of gravity. On descent, they are challenged to keep the wheel from turning too fast with gravity and picking up too much momentum. The motors control the speed and motion through a set of stationary wheels that rotate along the rim at the bottom of the wheel. The counterspin causes the wheel to rotate around its axis. In a traditional Ferris wheel, the axle, which is right here, is the true workhorse. It must sustain the full weight of the wheel and keeping it suspended above ground. The axle is typically supported by two towers on either side of the wheel. On permanent wheels, these towers can be driven underground dozens of feet, whereas transportable Ferris wheels, what you might see at the midway, usually hinge on towers to the wheel chasis and the base for the needed stability. So far, everything we've talked about can, you know, is talking about how wheels can stand upright and how they can move. But remember, people ride the Ferris wheels on capsules. So it's really the cart or the capsule that really makes the ride for the rider. The, on traditional observation wheels, like the Icon Park wheel, capsules are equipped with a computerized self-leveling system that minimizes the sway and automatically adjusts to the weight inside. Whereas the more uh, thrilling Ferris wheels, which you might see at the midway, they um, are hinged with allowance for tilting and swinging. We'd like to thank Icon Park's blog series on how wheels work for describing the design and how Ferris wheels move for this video.